A sense of unease has settled over the Umingagwa family, with a series of unsettling incidents targeting the president's son, Deputy Minister of Finance, Economic Development, and Investment Promotion. Honorable Kuta Kwash David Umingagwa. The latest incident, a break-in at the offices of Deputy Tourism Minister Tonai Umingagwa, has added another layer of concern to the growing list of security breaches. The break-in at the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority ZTA building in Harare occurred on Monday night, with the perpetrators gaining entry through the ceiling. Deputy Minister Umingagwa confirmed the incident on Tuesday morning, stating that the police were currently at the scene investigating the extent of the theft. We are still searching if they took anything, he told Newsday. This incident follows a string of mysterious events at the Deputy Finance Minister's Barrowdale home. Beginning with a security breach on June 23rd, the deputy minister, while watching television with his wife, called the police after hearing unusual noises from the ceiling. The officers, upon arriving, surveyed the house and perimeter but found nothing suspicious. However, a second call from the deputy minister at 11.50 p.m. prompted the officers to check the roof. There, they discovered a bag containing some of the deputy minister's belongings including torn documents, two Apple MacBook laptops, and a MacBook iPad, all seemingly deliberately damaged. The deputy minister reported that these items had been taken from his bedroom. He also informed the officers that his 9mm Beretta pistol, with 15 live cartridges, was missing, along with 500 US dollars in cash. Adding to the bizarre nature of the incident, the intruder had retrieved a loaf of bread from the kitchen and left it on the floor near the door. In another unsettling act, the intruder had cut the driver's headrest of the deputy minister's parked Land Rover Defender. The following day, on June 24, police swarmed the property, including a canine unit, but found no trace of the suspect or any evidence of forced entry. Yet, the following morning, the deputy minister's eight-year-old son discovered a live cartridge lying on the floor near his parents' bedroom door. Police were called, and investigators located three cartridges within two meters of the door and a further three on the lawn outside the property. The events culminated in a fire incident on June 28 at the deputy minister's home. Police confirmed the incident in a statement, but did not provide further details on the cause or extent of the fire. Sources revealed that firefighters were called to extinguish the fire, which reignited on Sunday morning. These incidents have sent shockwaves through the country, with many speculating about the motives behind these targeted acts. The police have launched investigations into all the incidents, but no arrests have been made. The Zimbabwe Republic Police confirms that investigations are currently underway in connection with a fire incident which occurred at the house of the Deputy Minister of Finance, Economic Development and Investment Promotion, Honorable Kutakwash David Umingagwa on June 28, 2024 at 23.30 p.m., said police spokesperson Commissioner Paul Nyathi. The incidents have drawn parallels to previous attacks on President Umingagwa's life including the 2018 bomb explosion at a campaign rally in Bulawayo, which claimed the lives of two security personnel and injured several others. The president has yet to comment publicly on the threats against his son, but the events have undoubtedly raised concerns about the safety and security of high-ranking government officials and their families. The Zimbabwean public is anxiously awaiting updates on the investigations and hoping for a swift resolution to these mysterious incidents. The incidents highlight the need for enhanced security measures for government officials and their families, especially in light of the recent political climate. It remains to be seen whether the authorities will be able to uncover the perpetrators and their motives, or whether these incidents will continue to cast a shadow of uncertainty over the Amingagwa family.